Hey guys, and welcome back to another episode of Rain Day Gaming. My name is Rain Day, and today we're taking a look at how to play Zhang Kui. That's right, there's no jokes, no montages. This is how to play and build this god in the correct way so that you have a great experience and know how to use his combo to basically 100 to 0 opponents. That's right, Zhang Kui, one of the tankier mages in Smite. Actually, only Raijin and Freya have the same base protections as Zhang Kui in terms of scaling, but the fact is, you may find Zhang Kui still feeling and being much tankier than those other two, much tankier than almost any other mage besides Hades in the game, and that is because of his passive called Demon Bag. I'll tell you how all his abilities work, I'll tell you about how to combo opponents so you can literally, with this build, 100 to 0 them without them having a chance to move, and I will show you how you want to be using Jean Kuei to the best of your potential. Also, this is a very important video, so if you like to skip through my videos, which some of you do, and that's fine, you want to get to the action, don't. I'm talking about a very important topic that's very close to me, and it's about positive gaming. But it's not only that, it's about how to uh, really combat a lot of the BM that you see in Smite right now. And that is an important thing. We will touch on that. You will see that take place in this game. Uh, it also covers the Never Surrender rule. It covers uh, a lot of the things that I bring up very constantly. As you see, we're all here just basically getting ready to go ahead and get into the game. Uh, you see the Emir coming over, hitting me with a freeze as I actually turn around, try and get my exercise. Actually, I believe that's exorcism to get a little bit of healing. I have to pop my Aegis to make sure I do not die right away, but the Bacchus now, after he's counter-initiated, looks like he may be in trouble. I have my ultimate, and I pop it, and my demons are already chasing him. The Odin with a little bit of damage, and it allows me to get the first blood onto Jassic there. He's going down, and now it's time for us to try and recoup. I have decent amount of mana, a little bit of health. If that Odin would have hit that bird bomb, I might have had a chance to go in and support. Looks like the Bologna and the Artemis are going on that Nemesis, but I have to back up because I want to be a little more careful with my play. I've already got first blood. I did a great start here, which is starting with Lost Artifact. What that will allow me to do is go into either Chronos Pendant or Rod of Tahuti, depending on how well I'm going, how confident I feel. Uh, a lot of uh, ways you can play Zhang Kui are you can build a couple of defensive items like Breastplate of Valor or uh, Bulwark of Hope, which will give you either magical or physical defenses and Breastplate of Valor specifically giving you cooldown reduction. I opted for the Kronos Pendant, which is cooldown reduction. That's a magical element and a fantastic ring by the Odin here. The Emir is putting himself in just a bad spot doing his ult, but he gets, by, he gets hit by Vulcan and me and my ticking damage from my number one. My Exposed Evil actually takes him out, so I get the double kill. The Bacchus is still there, and oh no, I hit him with a basic attack and my Exorcism clears it up for the double kill, and I actually end up going 3-0. The Valona ultimate comes out, but it's too little too late, and I'm the guy who's heading back to base with all the goodies in my demon bag. And let's talk about Jean Kuei's abilities now so you know what we're doing beforehand. This build is going, like I said, to be a 100-0 build at the end. You have to stay and watch till the end to see how that develops and progresses. I'll talk about how to combo his abilities. You've seen a little bit of them now, but let's first find out exactly what they are. Jean Kuei's passive is called Demon Bag, and I talked about why he's one of the more um, tankier mages in all of Smite. It's because this bag gives him 40 plus protection. It gives him 40 protections when full. You build stacks by throwing your number one expose evil and then using your number two exorcism on the same target. What that will do is it will actually initiate 40% of the remaining damage left over on your number one. So you won't be doing 100% damage. You'll get 40% of it immediately, and you'll also do the damage from your number two but just like you would exercise an evil, it then has to go somewhere, and that goes straight to his demon bag. I get ulted here by the Nemesis, and I pop my ultimate immediately, doubling my protections from 18 to 36. The Nemesis decides to find another target, and it looks like they do get the kill onto our Skeleton, or Skeleton, I guess. That's, that's an interesting name for a teenager. The Odin Ring, however, comes up and secures the kill on Jassic. Again, that Bacchus looking like he's out of position. I pick up not the Kronos uh, Shoes of Focus boost to get max cooldown. I actually go for the Penetration. The early damage of Penetration for me, I find, because I've got that 3-0 lead, is going to be valuable. The Neath is here, but she actually backflips out of my Exposed Evil. Uh, acts, uh, yeah, out of my Exposed Evil and does not take the damage over time and the slow. Now, like I was saying there, you saw a perfect example. My Demon Bag fills every single time I use my number one and two onto a target. It could be a god. It could be a minion. And what happens is those, de those demons go into my bag. Now, once they're in my bag, I have immediately gained protections from those demons. So up to 20 protections I can have from that bag just constantly sitting on. That's magical and physical. So that's essentially building... 20 protections, magical, and physical damage. There's not a lot of items that you could do that, and especially since Jean Kuei has that for free, that's why he's so tanky, especially early game. Not many mages or characters can have 40 
total protections uh, at the start of a game on top of their base protections uh, for basically free, just stacking a couple of things. As you see, the blink box is ult there, something I have to be aware of. I am just backing up steadily, making sure I keep my eyes on who is chasing me, the Amir and the Nemesis pressuring us. And at this point, it's that I realize that you know what? It looks like our team's a little disorganized. I don't know whether one person's, like, staying in base a little too long. Skeleton, the Bologna, doesn't seem like she's, uh, uh, having too good of a time, but the ultimate from our Odin is a great ultimate, and Vulcan hits three with his. I actually have my number three there for the stun, and my number one, Exposed Evil, is doing the job. It looks like my ghost, oh, and the basic attack lands as Beneath tries to backflip out of it, but it's sitting there waiting for, her. oh my goodness, the double kill again. I'm five and oh. Can somebody stop this running, fat, Chinese... Man, can somebody please? I, I was I was doing running fat man, but that was actually a dare somebody gave me for full movement speed Kubikarna, which I do want to do. Thank you guys so much. If you do like this video, please leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe. Great way to support me, and uh, definitely keep checking out the dare me videos because those are fun. I love checking out your dares, reading, responding to your comments. Uh, I was just actually um, looking at some of those this morning, and that's I think why the running fat man was in my head. But you see there. A great example of really how to go into a fight. You hit people with the exposed, they get slowed, and we'll talk about that just now. But I was just finishing Jean-Quay again because of those protections. Just a tanky mage, a hard person to kill. He also gets healing off his number two. And let's move on to his number one. You see, uh, his number one is called Exposed Evil. You'll see me throw that, and I level that first. Now, there are several ways you can level Zhang Kui. A lot of people may say, Rainy, why are you leveling your number one over your number two? Which gives you more damage, which they might think. Or it also gives you the healing, which is the key component of that. You can really level Jean Kui different ways. The, the way I like to play him with this build is maximizing the stun potential I have to allow my number two and a basic attack of Polynomicon to get off onto a target. So what that means is the when I have my exposed evil, my number one, onto a god or a minion, my number two and my number three will interact with it in different ways. So... Exposed Evil, like I said, it's a ticking damage. You throw it onto a target, it can hit multiple targets, it can hit anyone it passes through. So you can hit literally all members of the team if you want, and apply 20% slow as you see there. All these demons going into my bag, I've now got 16 tallied up. It looks like Amir and Bacchus are trying to find something happening. It looks like the Blink ult again takes place, and Vulcan is the target this time. The Amir after that freezes, but Vulcan with a fantastic purification bead, saving it for just the right time. A Polyamagon procs, and I actually stun the Bach, the Amir into an Artemis trap. The Scylla ult goes, but it's off the mark. The Vulcan ult comes back in return. It looks like it may hit the Bacchus, but it looks like he might have narrowly escaped, and the Amir is already back. The Odin here looking to jump and try and clear uh, some of these minions, and that's a great job by him, and I hear the Scylla has just thrown a crush, so I'm trying to chase up with her, and again, the slow allowing me to chase up and actually threaten her. I want to hit her with a number three. I try the number two, but it's just off the mark. I get a little bit of healing uh, and clear a little bit of the minion wave, but it's not enough to really do anything, and you'll see there, uh, because I didn't have my number one on the minion wave, I didn't get the healing. Like I really thought, I did get a little bit from the Polynomicon, which is the lifesteal that I have, uh, but it really wasn't able to do what I wanted there, which was hit the three. Now, the number one, like I just showed you here, with the number two will give you a ton of healing. It will also make sure your number one's damage, which is 300 damage, plus a potential of, I believe, 70% of your magical power. So I have 195 magical power, 70% of that on top of uh, the, uh, you know, 300 base damage that it will give you uh, is actually going to give you um, quite a bit of damage. It's going to be your most damaging single ability besides your ultimate. So one of the reasons you can upgrade your one is because it gives you a lot of poke. Uh, it gives you a, a great kind of pressure mechanic because of the slow as well. And it's, a, it's a hard CC to deal with, especially since this is ticking for five seconds. That's kind of a long slow for five seconds, and you can really set up a lot. And, and, and movement is key here, especially in arena. Positioning is huge, and, and you want to make sure that people are out of position as much as possible. The Amir and Bach is doing a great job initiating. We have to find some way of dealing with this. However, we are still up by nine ticks, and I am carrying. I stunned the Nemesis there. She has stunned for a long time. I pop my ultimate. I'm hitting all four members of the team, five members of the team here with my ultimate, and I've barely been taking down with any health. The Vulcan ultimate comes out. The Neath is there. She's trying to pressure me, but she's got the exposed evil on her. I want to go and hit her with the number two, and I do. Skeleton comes in with a fantastic dunk from the backside, and I finish it up. Although, Skeleton getting the kill, but adding that crucial damage with my number two exorcism to go ahead and take out. And it looks like the Bacchus is getting pressured by the Skeleton. I want to get some healing up. I go ahead and throw my number one, my number two, and bam, I'm back up a little bit of healing. I pressure the Scylla with a Polynomicon basic attack, adding 75% of my total magical power, which is of 225. It's going to close to 200 magical power there added onto that basic attack uh which will actually hurt that silica quite a lot and be enough pressure to send her back to base and me 
back getting my next item, which is going to be Soul Reaver, which is going to add some of the burst for this 100 to 0 build that you guys will be seeing. Now, I've done this build before, and again, I believe this is my favorite way of playing Jean Kui. Like I said, if you want to play a little tankier, or you want to play a little bit more sustain wise, rather than poking people, rather than um, really getting your max damage off, going for more of the utility of the heal, or going for more of the utility of the sun, you can definitely upgrade your 2 or your 3. I would definitely recommend upgrading either your 1 or your 2 first for either the heal and that, but I've got my sprint. I've got a little bit of my Aegis. It's down right now, but I'm trying to get away. It looks like there's a huge aggression coming out from the Amir. The Scylla ultimate is there. I do stun her, but she's actually CC immune, so the stun does not take effect. I had a Polynomicon onto the Amir, and he's almost down. However, he narrowly avoids the ultimate by the Vulcan. I want to get my Exposed Evil, but the Neath is right there, and I pop my ultimate as well. I actually hit her with a basic attack, and she looks like she's going to be dead, but oh, the Aegis comes out, and she saves herself. What a play by the Neath there, backflipping and knowing that that demon was coming out from my ultimate much like um how would you say Thanatos when he goes up into the air and he maybe is taking a ballista bolt or something like that from a tower he goes up in the air and he's immune for that moment right you can't get killed during that moment but the fact is it's still chasing you when you come down that damage is still going to come unless you ages she ages perfectly she may have been able to be killed but I do not think the demon was fast enough to catch her as she backflips so she created a little bit of time to buy herself the time to actually start and then this is what surprises me the surrender vote comes out. I don't understand, but I realize we have four players, but I still put a question mark because we are winning the game. This is what m is marvelous to me. This is a solo queue game. I run immediately away because I know the Amir with the wall is trying to freeze me. He's jumping and hopping. So what? A little bit of BM. I don't really care. I'm playing a great game. I'm 5-0 and 3. I'm happy and I'm wondering why are we trying to surrender? This is a real big issue that I want to bring up in the Smite community right now. And I'm going to be doing videos and discussions about this more. I hit Amir with the Soul Reaver proc, and that takes off 15% of his health. The Vulcan turret is placed perfectly. I want to get a stun around there, but the ult Odin ultimate comes great. I do not get hit by the Scylla, thank goodness, although the Bacchus ult is right there. But I stun the Bacchus into taking the damage from the Vulcan ult. I miss my Polynomicon basic attack. However, we are still pressuring. The Scylla is there. She gets hit with my card. And now that Exposed Evil is coming. The damage from the Vulcan is much more than she would have expected. And now she's to retreat. It's just the Amir and the Neath, and now I've got a chance to go ahead and take that Neath. I know the backflip might be coming, so I'm staying in the back line, trying to basically make sure to force the backflip out. The Odin jump comes, but it's right off the mark as Neath anticipates that and backflips. I maybe should have gone a little bit more aggressive there, as you might have seen. Now, they're back away. We're four players down. We're only four players up, but we're still winning. A lot of people will quit at this moment. Please do not, guys. Please keep playing. Do it, because you will see at the end of the game what happens. You have to understand this is a very big topic. Please do not skip through all of this stuff because I want to spend some time talking about it after we cover the rest of the abilities. Now, of course, Exorcism, great ability. Like I said, you can upgrade this or your one beforehand. Uh, the thing about upgrading Exorcism is, again, you don't have as much poke with your one, um, but again, you will be getting that heal, and that is quite a big heal. 80 plus 20% of your magical damage, of your magical power, and it can actually heal because you can only have a maximum of three ghosts that you heal from. You can have a maximum of 240 healing plus 60% of your magical power. So 60%, that's a little bit above half. So maybe 150, let's just take half. That's pretty easy to say. Uh, 150 plus 240, that's almost 400 healing you're going to be having. The blink in from the Emir and the box. It looks like I'm in trouble, but I actually have my Aegis to avoid a lot of that damage. And I pop my ultimate. They don't want to stay near me. The Scylla misses her ult. I stun the Emir into the Vulcan ult, actually. We turn that around. Kaiker gets the kill on a skeleton, but average daily weekly 5375 five, goes in and gets the kill. Now I pop my sprint because I want to chase him out. I've got a Polynomicon proc. I try to go ahead the Bacchus, but he's trying to stun me. I'm trying to get out of there, but I cannot find him. I hit the base attack as well as the Vulcan with the backfire under the Scylla, and that just deletes her from the game. She might be where Anubis is at this moment, but then the Nemesis is able to dash away, but the Neath backflip now, that's looking bad. I've got my Exposed Evil almost ready, and though she ages it, she's still getting hit with the slow. The Polynomicon proc takes that away, and the Exposed Evil should do it however to average daily week. 5375 five, goes ahead and finishes that off with a bird bomb, and that is all she wrote. We actually are still winning. We're 10 points ahead. And who said surrender? I have no idea, but they're crazy. They're crazy. Please, 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 please understand that whether you're right or you're wrong, you believe you can or you can't, you're right. That's what I wanted to say. And that is really important. You see the combo coming out there, the one, the three, and then going into the two, I actually hit the nemesis with the one, forcing her to retreat even more. You see that hitbox and the travel distance of that number one very far. And again, that's why I like it up. It's a great poke. That's slow for five seconds. And if that's doing a if that's doing the max damage it can do, 300 plus 
75% of your magical damage, that's quite a lot. Now you see I've almost got all my abilities up. I'm level 19. There's a large aggression coming out here, and I have to get away from the Emir Freeze. The Vulcan Ultimate is right on money. Gotta give a shout out to Vulcan for hitting these ultimates. I actually take out the Emir uh, with a Soul Reaver proc and my number three slowing him. The Polynomicon damage comes out, but the Bacchus jumps to avoid right away from the Odin, and that's a fantastic awareness from that Bacchus, or maybe he just hit it right away. And now we are down by four, and the Surrender comes out again, and two people vote. And I don't understand. I know we're four players down. Down, but who cares guys these are just stats we're playing and we're winning we are doing well I, I don't understand we're five ticks down why are you guys wanting to surrender that is what I'm trying to find out that is what I don't understand about the, the connection the, the the mentality the thought behind players and gamers in my in MOBAs in this type and in, in this culture that we have created and I want to put an end to that guys I really do and it's gonna take time it's gonna take collecting and developing people who actually feel uh, a different way about it. Uh, it's not going to be saying these guys are wrong. It's going to be saying this is how we feel. This is a great way to do it. This is how we can achieve more and have more fun in our games. But again, we'll talk more about that a little bit later. The damage coming out, and absolutely Skeleton has no chance here. The Bacchus knock-up is really, really bad for me, and I get hit with a Crush as well. I actually have my number three to go ahead, and I dodge the Scylla ultimate, and actually end up taking her out with one cool banana as well. Actually dodging that ultimate. She's in a bad spot. The, the Lona ult comes out after that, and she just gets put in a pickle, a.k.a. dead. Yeah, she dies. <laughs> um, the number three of Jean Quay is what I have maxed second, and let me tell you why and why it coordinates with this 100 to zero build. So a lot of you guys re watching this probably know how and why you want to uh, basically have Jean Quay as a 100 to zero god. He's a tanky god, but again, he can do so much damage with this build. The reason is uh, when you use your number three and it court and you have your number one on the target and you use your number three on them as well, you double the amount of time that ability stuns. So the number three book of demons, what it does is it allows you to have a second basic attack. So every time I basic attack with my number three still up, not on cooldown, right? As it is now, I get a second basic attack for 50% of my damage. It fires a slightly to the left of where my normal basic attack is, and it allows you to actually build Jean Quay basic attack in a really cool way. Now, again, you have to get a lot closer to a target, but you just saw there the proc from the basic attack happening. I use my three to actually stun the Nemesis, removing the shield, because hard CC actually removes that shield. The Bacchus is coming after me, and it looks like they're really trying to kill me, and the Nemesis ults me, and okay, you guys kill me fine Bacchus nemesis you guys are diving so hard 4v5 fine you finally killed me good job I'm 607 and I'm still feeling great because I feel like I'm having a great game despite people wanting to surrender every five minutes and despite us being a man down the Vulcan ultimate is a fantastic Aegis but I get the kill onto the Neath who should have backed a long time ago now this nemesis isn't a problem because she got hit with a backfire however she's got her sprint but guess what I've got sprint too baby the bird bomb coming out from Odin but guess what that is actually not going to do it I actually have the sprint here and I want to get away but you see the stun there and I'm actually almost turning this around the knock up from the Bacchus yes but I've got my ultimate and I pop it immediately to gain double protections I now throw my exposed evil onto the emir and he's getting damage and my ghost and guess what emir goes down baby that's right i did a muscle move i was like oh last is right there oh my man my boy last is killing it in the sbl and i was just like dude you two double ganked me you popped an ult you popped two ultis you still couldn't kill me and i ended up killing you in return after you got dunked on oh my god that just felt so good i felt so good about this because right now i'm just we're getting hit with the surrender you know how, how have you guys ever been in this moment again another surrender I cannot believe this. What is up with the world, guys? Have you not been in this moment where you're doing well? You know your team can win. If everyone just gives their best, we could be winning right now. The Odin is not doing his best at this moment. The Odin is jumping around. People are just standing there. They're chatting. They're tightened. The, Vul the Vulcan is saying, please, man, you're hitting great ultimates. We are winning these team fights 4v5. And, and, and we are saying surrender, dude. Keep playing. We're almost done with the game. Why would you give up? That's what I'm trying to say. This is just a, a, a mentality, a culture that we have. And, and for me, in this how-to video, I wanted to just explain. The reason I decided to go with Voice Zone at the end of this is because Bacchus and Emir are ulting on us. So normally, you could pick a different type of penetration. Uh, you could even switch this with Breastplate of Valor or Bulwark of Hope or Hide of the Urchin. Those three items I recommend because they make Zhang play very, very tanky, more tanky than usual. And he actually plays as a front line. In this build, it's a 100 to 0 build, so he's more of a mage. He's going to be looking to literally kill someone from 100 health, when stun lock them, 
to kill them with a Polynomicon proc, his three, and then his two, and then the damage from his one. That will happen. I'll show you it in this video. You will see it. And you can say this grill is great. But if you want to play a little more frontline, which a lot of pro players will do, you can build Bulwark of Hope. You can build Breastplate of Valor. You can build Hide of the Urchin, which will give you double protections. It will give you basically protections on both sides. And with the amount of assists and kills I've gotten, I would have had full stacks on that by now. The Odin using a Bird Bomb jumping away. I mean, right now, there's just no initiation, and that is one of the biggest problems. Now, you see uh, what I was talking about with Book of Demons. It gives you that extra basic attack, but it also gives you the... Uh, it also gives you the stun and that is the biggest deal when you have the exposed evil on them the number one and you hit them with a three that stun doubles from 0.9 to 1.8 seconds and that is the key to this build 1.8 seconds is a hell of a long time to be stunned you see the damage took off 120 a quarter of Nemesis's health with one basic attack from Polynomicon and look the Amir freezes onto me fantastic I get ulted by the Nemesis to a blink freeze from the Amir and an ult from the Nemesis. Take me out. They just want me. They're salty. They want me. Well, guess what? That's fine. My team is not attacking. They're not aggressing. They're they're throwing random ults out there. You see the 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 the, the Odin right there is 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 just basically being on the back foot because he doesn't want to go after this game. He's considered it a loss, and that is the biggest problem right now. All the surrenders coming out, all the time we've been wasting. Really, we should have been focusing on how can we win this game because we're close. You see the one, the three, the two, the basic attack. That's it. That is a basically 100-0. That is how you do it. The one, the three, basic attack, the two. That should 100-0 a squishy target, which is my mages, my hunters, uh, my assassins who aren't building defense. We've only got six ticks left, but can you believe it? We're still battling this out. I haven't given up, and you guys shouldn't either. Never give up, never stop gaming. That's what we say here on the channel. Recall Demons' his last ability basically makes people want to run away from you because you double the protections you have. I, I used it a little bit ago, and I haven't been building stacks, but when I use this on my number two, oh, wow, the Scylla coming in. When I use this on my number two, I actually am going to be able to with, oh my god, the two, three kill and pick up the Amir. I've also built up a stack onto my passive there. I've got an extra protection of both magical and physical damage. You see the neat there, the Polynomicon and the Exposed Evil taking her to about one third of her health down, maybe almost half of her health down with that one ability. What up, Nemesis? How you doing? You ult me? Okay, one, three, basic attack. Now, I didn't even use my two. That's because Vulcan uses Meatball. If I had to use my two, it would have really just replaced the Meatball. The Neath trying to go ahead and stop me, but the Vulcan takes the ult. We're now 424. It was 4 to 57 in a 47 or something. We could maybe do this. Hold on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And you just see there, that's how you do it, guys. The one, the three, the basic attack while they're still stunned, and then the two. The reason the one three needs to happen is because you get to double the stun on the three, and that is really how you do it. You can poke with your one two, you can poke with just your one, and that is how you do it. When you build your full stacks, which you want to as soon as possible, though it will be harder late game uh, for sometimes when people are like this are pressuring you, uh, it gives you those extra protections. When you pop your ultimate, you are a tank. You become, you double your protections. You really, really are hard to kill. And people will basically try to run away from you rather than that, considering the amount of damage you do. It is two to nine. It's two to nine. We can win this game. If we had not tried to surrender all of these moments, we could have easily been ahead in this game and won. Let's see what happens because you know what? This is important. The blink comes out from the Amir. The Vulcan is there. The freeze, but the Bologna counter initiates onto the Bacchus and the Amir. But two ultimates come out from the Bacchus. The Nemesis is there. I got a basic attack. It's zero to three and we lost. Oh my god. Oh my god. We lost zero to three. And we tried to surrender four times. Four times. And we lost by three ticks. Is anyone else seeing that this is crazy? Please. This got me so livid because of the fact that we give up before anything is decided. I said it in the beginning and I messed it up, but I want to say it now. Whether you believe you're right or whether you believe you can or you can't, you're right. And that is the most important thing I want to leave with you guys today. When you surrender, you surrender to the possibility of not only a win, but you surrender to the possibility that you will give your all. And when you don't give your all, you always have the opportunity to say, hey, I didn't give my all. Cool. Well, I lost, but hey, I could have given more. Sure. You get that out. You get to maybe feel good about yourself, but in the back of your mind, you know you copped out. Because when you don't give your all, you don't know what could have happened. This isn't about winning. It's about creating a community of gamers and people who are usually young people. 
going out into life, realizing that giving up when things look bleak or even when they look tied and it's not a for sure win and you have to like go and work for something that you don't just give up because that doesn't happen in life and nowhere else in life does that work out for you. And that's what I want to say. Attitude is key. This game isn't meant for people to play perfectly. The Odin gave up because he said the Bologna was feeding, but we lost 0-3, to three, so who cares? I went 11-2, and two, so if Bologna's feeding, I went 11-2, and two, it's the same. Your play might have made the biggest difference if you hadn't been jumping around and hadn't basically spent all your time surrendering or giving up and basically said, let's go and play. Let's do my best. Let me be the best Odin I can be for this team. And maybe we can win 4v5. This team said we were actually... Not even sure we were going to win that game. We didn't even deserve to win. And that's the biggest problem, guys. Because you know what? So many of us count ourselves out before we actually see what we could be. And I don't want anyone, especially some of my younger viewers, but even the older people, man, don't, don't count yourselves out of your own fight. Don't be your own doubter. It's easy to do that because when people doubt you, and they will in life, when you have some type of success or you're close to success, they will doubt you. And they will make it known because they're jealous of that. Don't let that be the reason you doubt yourself first. Don't be the guy say, yeah, I know I'm ugly. So that when everyone says you're ugly, you can pretend to say, yeah, I know. Say you're beautiful. Say you can do the best you can do. Say you're going to win this game. And who cares if you don't mess up, man? Because you did your best. You forget the rest. That's it. Guys, we got to start changing this community. That's what Rainy Gaming is about. That's why a lot of my content really focuses on how to do things better, even when you make mistakes. That's why I wanted to make this how-to Jean Quay, not only because I got a request from one of my uh, subscribers, so I wanted to give that to you guys. I want to show you this 100-0 build. Hopefully, you did enjoy it, and you enjoy the Jean Quay gameplay and how dangerous he can be as a mage, considering uh, the fact that he's so hard to kill, and his ultimate makes people running away, giving just 700 damage per basically total uh, if it hits one target and then 100% of your magical power, which was at about 400, so basically 1,100 damage to a target, but you could do that to five targets. You could put in out 5,000 damage just from your ultimate if you get that right, especially with a, a, a ring like Odin's where you can just keep targets in that. One of the more potent combos, we were talking about potent combos the other day, this is one of the more potent ones. I don't want to take too much time with this, guys. And we'll spend more videos talking about how to stay positive, how to deal with it when players do this to you, and also how to do it when you're feeling like you want to do this and you want to give up. But don't worry, guys. This is the place to combat that issue. This is the place where we can champion people doing their best, forgetting the rest, playing the game to love it. If you go 2 and 10 as a Bologna, instead of saying, you suck, uninstall, I want to say, let me help you. Let me show you how you want to build or play this guy. Hey, let me let me link you to a guide I did that might help you get that the right way and not give up, okay? Because you can't do it in life. We shouldn't model that here. And that is really one of the biggest things that I stand for. And I'm really glad that you guys who did watch the entire video got to see that in action and got to hear a little bit about what I'm talking about. I'm not, I'm not preaching from a pulpit. I'm preaching from a guy who will get upset but still knows that this experience is not the experience I want for myself. I'd much rather give it my best, and even if I lost, know that I did what I could, and now it's just a matter of, hey, let me improve, all right? So I hope you guys remember that, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know who you'd like me to do a how-to play next, and hopefully, if you have any questions, I'll be able to answer them promptly down in the comment section below for things I didn't cover. Like I said, I did not build Jean Quay like you might see a lot of pros build him where you build a, definitely a defensive item of magic, a bulwark, uh, breastplate of valor or something else like that. But I definitely did build this in the in the basically the awareness of saying that I like to play with poking from my one. I like the stun option from my three because it's a great amount of CC in the CC heavy meta. And I also uh, really, really like uh, the fact that he can combo a, a god basically with that stun factor uh, to basically 100 to zero um, when you get that full combo off, definitely towards the late game. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this type of video. And Please leave a like, share, comment, and subscribe to the channel for more stuff like this here at Rainy Gaming. As always, my name is Rainy. Remember to never give up, never stop gaming, and I'll see you guys next time.